Good morning and welcome to our Eucharist for this Wednesday in the third week of Advent. Today we remember Saint Lucy. There are uh, three major saints that are commemorated during the Advent season. Uh, Saint Nicholas, who we remembered last week. Nicholas embodies the Christian virtues of kindness, of charity, of gentleness of love. Next week, we commemorate St. Thomas the Apostle, who embodies the, the Christian virtue of a probing faith. Uh, Thomas is the one who just doesn't take things for granted, is, is the one who needs to touch and feel and, and literally probe the Christ, the risen one, as part of his, his coming to, to faith. Today, we remember St. Lucy, um, Santa Lucia. Lucy is remembered and commemorated with um, great pizzazz in um, the Scandinavian countries and also in Italy uh, with parades and little girls getting dressed up with rings of um, candles on their heads. Uh, she, um, embodies for us the Christian virtue of, of living in the light of Christ. Um, she is an early martyr, lived in um, the beginning of the fourth century. A, a lot of the stories we hear of these martyrs are very similar. Um, she's, you know, she's young, she's unmarried, they try to marry her off, and she didn't buy into that. Um, Suter gets mad, um, sets her up. She eventually gets um, martyred. And the story of her martyrdom is various versions of grotesque. Uh, eyes plucked out. You know, she's um, finally killed with a dagger in her throat. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of chuckle um, at the, the lengths to which those early writers went um, to try to express the, the deep passion of these early saints. Uh, I think they could have done it in a different way, but the story is the story. And I invite you to read that when you have some time. Blessed are you, holy and living God. You came, came to, to your people, people and, and set, set them, them free. free. The Lord be with you. And also, also with you. Let us pray. Loving God, for the salvation of all, you gave Jesus Christ as light to the world in darkness. Illumine us with your daughter Lucy, with the light of Christ that by the merits of his passion we may be led to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, who lives who with you in the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. And from the throne came a voice saying, Praise our God, all you, all his servants, and all who fear him, small and great. Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the sound of many waters, and like the sound of mighty thunder peals crying out, Hallelujah! For the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him the glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. To her it has been granted to be clothed with fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm today is Psalm 131. It is the shortest psalm in the entire Psalter, with a total of four verses. In some translations of the Psalter, it gets uh, included with 
one of the other songs because it is so short. We shall say it in unison. O oh Lord, I, I am not proud. I have no haughty looks. I do not occupy myself with great matters or with things that are too hard for me. But I still my soul and make it quiet like a child upon its mother's breast. My soul is quieted within me. O Israel, wait upon the Lord from this time forth forevermore. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. So, so my thoughts this morning are a little bit disconnected um, with just picking up various verses in each of the three readings. Uh, so in, in the book of Revelation, the bride of Christ is actually the church. So, so whenever John in Revelation refers to Christ a uh, bride, he is always referring to the church. And so what, what struck me um, is n number one, the multitude of voices and his visual language of the, this, the, this kind of rolling waves. You can kind of imagine yourself standing in Ocean City and, um, on, on a stormy day like today, for instance, um, of those waves breaking, but, but being incessant and louder and louder and louder, creating a chorus. Or the other image he uses is that of, um, of thunder peals, almost as if the thunder peals are like a mighty organ. Uh, so you have this image of these voices swelling louder and louder and louder, coming from a great distance but moving closer and closer to you. And they're all proclaiming praise of God. I mean, their first word is Alleluia, which is praise God, right? Um, but the, and, 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 and the bride is described being, being clothed with its fine linen, bright and pure. Uh, so you can almost see kind of this radiant wedding gown um, as the bride comes to approach the groom, uh, as the church comes to approach the Christ. And then the clincher, um, the last line, that this fine linen that is bright and pure is the righteous deeds of the saints. So when I hear that, that includes not just the Lucys, you know, the saints that we name, not just those who lived in the past, but 
the three of us and those of you out there joining us who are the saints today, um, that every righteous deed of every saint close the church in pure white linen so that the, the fabric wedding garment is woven over time. It's an unfinished garment, as beautiful as it might appear. It's an unfinished garment. That's kind of my first thought. My, my second thought was with the psalm, because it begins, and my first thought was, isn't the psalmist a little bit lazy? It's like, I, I don't want to trouble my mind with you know, anything that's, that's too difficult to think about. And so my first thought was, well, that's not a particularly wonderful image. Um, but then he says, he talks about, but I will still my soul and make it quiet. Uh, that there is, that sometimes we can fill our minds with so many little inconsequential things. Um, we, can, we can upset ourselves so easily by filling our minds with things that we really have little or no control over, that our mind becomes unsettled and our soul becomes unsettled. And when our, when our soul is unsettled, I think it's that much more difficult to pay attention to God's voice. And so he's saying, chill. And then finally in the gospel, <coughs> excuse me, in the gospel, um, John is trying to tell us something big is happening. But these verses kind of come right after uh, the gospel we heard on Sunday with John appearing as witness to the light. And they formed the prologue, which is the, which is the gospel for Christmas Day. On Christmas Day, we shift from um, Luke's telling of the very familiar Christmas story to this highly theological um, account of this word made flesh that was there at the beginning of time through the word that created all that is, but now that word is in our midst, full of grace and truth. That the Logos, uh, because when, when you go back to that creation story, although the Trinity is never mentioned explicitly, it's there implicitly. So you have God, the creator. You have the spirit that hovers over the darkness. And you have the word that is spoken. And as the word is spoken, creation happens. So that creation is a direct result of the word of God coming out of God, but being spoken out loud. Now that word is being spoken out loud, it um, in the person of Jesus. And John was to be clear. Light has come into the world. Light has come into the darkness. No and ifs, buts about it. The only question becomes, will you receive the light or will you fight the light? Will you, will you accept who you are uh, as children of the light and beloved of God or will you fight that kicking and screaming um, all the way to wherever? Um, and John's invitation is to live into that deep, deep mystery. Um, one of my favorite images of John, and this, this comes from John Philip Newell, who is a Celtic theologian. He, he thinks that John's gospel is the most intimate of all the gospels. And he envisions John the evangelist literally resting on the heart of Jesus and literally hearing the, the blood being pumped in Jesus' heart and writes out of that deep, deep intimacy um, of one who understands light has come, who lives within that light, who witnesses to that light, who believes in that light and believes that light makes all the difference 
and transforms us into the beloved children of God. All who accept have the power to become children of God, born not of the flesh or of the whims, but of God himself. Pretty powerful stuff as we move through the Advent season and move closer and closer to the celebration of Incarnation. The Prayers of the People Watchful at all times, let us pray for strength to stand with confidence before our Maker and Redeemer. That God may bring in his kingdom with justice and mercy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That God may establish among the nations his scepter of righteousness, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may seek Christ in the scriptures and recognize him in the breaking of the bread, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That God may bind up the brokenhearted, restore the sick, and raise up all who have fallen, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That the light of God's coming may dawn on all who live in darkness and in the shadow of death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That with all the saints in light, we may shine forth as lights for the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, especially for those we now name silently to the mercy and protection of our Heavenly Father. Almighty God, as your blessed Son, Jesus Christ, first came to seek and to save the lost, so may he come again to find in us the completion of his redeeming work. For he is now alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in all your saints who have been the chosen vessels of your grace in the lights of the world in their generation. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, 
which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we, we proclaim his, his resurrection, resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, Put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our and Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God of promise, you have prepared a banquet for us. Happy are those, those who are called to, to the, the supper, supper of, of the Lamb. Lamb. Together we pray. My, My Jesus, Jesus, I believe that you are, are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. altar. I we love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The gifts of God for the beloved children of God. Come to the Feast of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.